Hi everyone, this is Liz with UC QuickBooks Training. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to enter ADP checks in QuickBooks Desktop. Now you can do this with any outside payroll service you use. It doesn't have to just be ADP, it could be paychecks, any payroll service. I did do a video a while back um, showing you how to do it in QuickBooks Online. Towards the end of that video, I briefly went over how to do it in the desktop version, but Today, I'm going to show you how to do it in detail. So smash the like button and we'll get started. So before you get started in entering the checks, you need to make sure that you have four accounts in your chart of accounts. The first one is the payroll liability accounts. Payroll liability accounts. So go under your other current liabilities and make sure you have payroll liabilities. The second is you wanna make sure that you have the direct deposits and the other two accounts um, that you need to have is the expense accounts for your wages. So in this sample company file, they have it broken down between office staff and officers labor, which you can do that if um, the president of the company has is on payroll. And the other account is your payroll tax expense. So you need to make sure that you have at least minimum those four accounts, your payroll liabilities, your direct deposit, your wages expense, and your payroll tax expense. Now, if you do offer like other benefits in your company, then you can go ahead and add those under the payroll expense. Or if you have an employee that you're taking garnishment, it would be under the current liability expense. Once you have those accounts in your chart of accounts, now we can go and enter the checks. So banking, write a check. I have a sample AP report and start with the first employee. I'm gonna do by employee, this is by employee. So I'm only going to take the top um, information, okay? So his total wages was 2,405. Now I'm going to use an employee here in the uh, sample company file, um, Chris Pepper. And I'm just going to take this off and definitely use a number if ADP provides the number, but with direct deposit, they don't. You can use your own like one or DD1, whatever you wanna use. The date of the paycheck, um, and we can actually use this date, 625.20. So let's go ahead and change that, 625.20. And we're gonna go down here and we're going to start with the wages. So I'm going to put this as um, staff. I believe this company file had office staff in 2504. In the memo, I'm going to put wages. The next thing I'm going to do is the payroll liability for this employee. And that is 481.86, which is what ADP withheld. And I'm going to do it a negative, 481.86 employee liability, because it's what it's withheld from the 2,405. Then I'm going to do the employer portion and the employer's liability is 183.98. And because it's a liability, we're going to do a negative employee, employer liability. I forgot the L, liability. Okay, and then one more, well, a couple more things. We need the tax expense. The tax expense is the same as the employer liability. So payroll tax expense, that is what is deductible for the business. Oh, and it's not a negative, it's a positive. Now a negative um, would mean uh, an increase in the liability and then a positive in this form of transaction is an increase in the expense. So we're going to do payroll tax expense. And then we have one more, we have the direct deposit. As you can see, I didn't enter anything in the amount. 
QuickBooks did it for me. As I was entering the amounts under the for the account, each account, QuickBooks calculated for me. So let's go double check that. The net pay for this employee is one thousand uh nine twenty three fourteen. That's what QuickBooks calculated. So that is my direct deposit because this employee has direct deposit. I want to enter this um, net amount into the register. So in order to increase the register for direct deposit, I'm going to do a negative 2314. And I'm just going to put here net pay. Okay. And then this will zero out. This will go into my register for the company checking account. And when I reconcile the June business account, I'm just going to tick this off, mark it done, mark it cleared, even though it's zero, so it doesn't stay in my reconciliation um, screen or field or report. And I can move on to the next month. So I'm going to save and close. And let's just hit yes. Now let's go take a look at our accounts to make sure that they've been recorded good. So here's my payroll register. Let's take a look at this. And here it is. There was an increase in the employee portion, an increase in the employer portion. So that looks good. The direct deposit, here is the direct pay or the net pay for this date. And here is the net amount. And of course we have if we go into our payroll expense, payroll tax expense, we should be able to see those as well. And it's right here. That's the tax expense for um, Chris. And let's take a look. I put it under office staff. And let me change the date on this. And here's the wages, 2504. So the last step in this process is to make sure that you're recording the actual uh, withdrawals from the bank account that ADP does. So let's go back to the payroll liability account. Let me show you what I mean. When you see it through your bank feeds, or if you don't use your bank feeds, you can record a check. So for the liability portion that ADP takes out, you want to record it under payroll liabilities and it's right here. Your account will zero out and that's what you want. You wanna make sure that you see the liabilities and then what ADP withdraws and then you have zero until the next pay date. Same thing with direct deposit. Direct deposit will have the net amount and then whatever ADP takes out and it'll be zero, okay? I really hope that this video has helped you. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe for more how-tos, tips and tricks, and troubleshooting for QuickBooks. I will see you on the next one.